Hi folks, I'm Marty the Investment Guy, and when I help my friends with their superannuation, I keep finding the same problems which are costing them thousands or could potentially make them thousands. I would like to share 10 DIY super tips to help you take control of your financial goals. As there are many different super fund providers, I can only talk about the worst case scenarios which I have seen, and these worst cases aren't rare. More than one in four funds have these policies. Please contact your super provider to confirm exactly what you have or don't have. You will not find this information in the PDS. Tip number one, life insurance. How much are you paying for insurance every year? There are two scenarios I see with life insurance. Either you don't need it and you're paying for it, or you do need it and you're underinsured. If you're single, don't have children, no mortgage and have no beneficiaries, then you probably don't need life insurance. So cancel it and save hundreds of dollars every year. But if you're married, have children, a mortgage, or have beneficiaries, is your insurance benefit enough to provide for your family and a lifestyle without you? Will your life insurance benefit pay off the mortgage and debts and give your children the future they deserve and provide a future income? Either you're paying for something you don't need or you're not getting the best cover for your family. Tip number two, TPD insurance. This is the most expensive small print in history. You probably think your TPD insurance will provide a lump sum payment if you became totally and permanently disabled. And so you should. That's what the name implies, right? Wrong. There's a release condition you won't find in any PDS called the Own Any Occupation Definition. All TPD insurance inside superannuation, with rare exceptions, is any TPD insurance and will only pay a benefit if you cannot do any occupation after your TPD. So, if you can be trained as a car park attendant, you won't receive your benefit. The chances of getting your payment is slim to none. It's a pity you wasted money on those premiums for years. The alternative is to get own TPD insurance, where the release condition is you cannot do your own occupation. The premiums are higher, but so is the chance of receiving your benefit. TPD cover is now available for homemakers. If the chief and commander couldn't work around the house, how much would it cost to hire a cleaner, a cook, babysitter, chauffeur, accountant, etc, etc? Now the homemaker can have peace of mind too. Tip number three, income protection insurance. Dollar for dollar, income protection is the best value insurance and provides up to 75% of your income if you are unable to work due to illness or injury, and it's tax deductible. It should be your default must have insurance to protect your mortgage repayments and cost of living. Did you know your income protection can provide a benefit that increases with indexation until you're 65? But here's the downside of income protection inside super. If it looks like you'll be on claim for life, they'll pull the bait and switch. They'll determine that you are no longer short-term sick or injured, but you're now TPD'd. They will cancel your income protection and pay your TPD benefit in a lump sum. That doesn't sound too bad, right? Wrong. Let's say you're 30, earn $60,000 per annum, and your income protection is at 75%. Your lifetime IP benefit is 35 times 60,000 times 75% equals 1.35 million. Your TPD benefit may only be $250,000. Feel a bit ripped off to the tune of $1.1 million? Tip number four. You're a non-smoker, aren't you? Super funds have assumed you're a non-smoker. If you're a smoker, expect all of your insurance benefits to reduce by at least 25%. Tip number five. What's your retirement goal? How much would you like to retire with? $1 million? $2 million? $10 million? Super is not a magical investment where something magical happens and you retire with a million dollars. The average man retires with $114,000 and the average woman retires with $94,000. Retiring with $350,000 will give you a modest retirement, but I always like to aim for the stars and if I fail, I'll land on the moon. Why not aim for $500,000? It may not sound like much, but it puts you five times ahead of the average retiree. Using the chart below, the blue line represents what your super balance should be to retire at 65 with $500,000. If you're below the line, you retire with less than $500,000. It's not too late to get back on track, but time is your enemy. The faster you make changes to your super, 
the faster you'll get back on track. Tip number six, balanced fund. Did you know there are five fund classes which are classified by how much of the fund is diluted with cash investments? By default, you are in a balanced fund which is approximately diluted with 30% or more with cash. Yep, 30% of your money is not working. Just by changing your fund class, you can instantly improve your growth. You also increase your downside risk, but I'll show you how to manage that with stop losses. Tip number seven, limited fund choices. There are five fund classes available in super, and you may not actually have access to all five. Depending on your super provider, you may only have four classes and only 15 funds to choose from. Some retail funds over 100 fund choices from all five classes. Tip number eight, no stop loss. Professionals use stop losses, amateurs don't. Super funds do not use a stop loss. Successful investors know it's not what you win, it's what you don't lose. What's the point of making big gains only to lose them when the market falls? A stop loss is a predetermined price where you believe the fund is not moving in your favor and has reached a point of no return for making any further profits. No successful fund lasts forever, and whether you're in a winning fund or a losing fund, the most important part of investing is selling, either to lock in profits before it falls or selling at a small loss before it becomes a big loss. The chart shown shows the ASX 200 index between 2004 and 2009 with a red stop loss line. The price crossed below the stop loss in January 2008. If you had exited, you would have been out of the market and avoid the losses during the global financial crisis or GFC. Are you locking in profits with a stop loss or giving money back to the market? Tip number nine, no active fund management. When the next share market crash occurs, do you think your super fund manager will warn you and move your funds to a safer option to prevent losses? Unfortunately, this will never happen. Super funds are not actively managed. Don't expect a phone call from your super fund manager when the next market collapse occurs. Here's a worst case scenario. You're five years from retirement and have $1 million in super and could easily retire on 50,000 per year. But the market crashes and drops 30% and doesn't recover by the time you retire. Your new retirement salary is $35,000 per year. How much is active fund management worth to you? There have been four major market crashes in the last 100 years. How many more crashes will you see before you retire and how much will each crash cost you? Tip number 10, roll up your super. Do you have more than one super account? Then you also have more than one insurance policy. Just because you're no longer making contributions doesn't mean they stop taking insurance premiums. They only stop taking premiums when your super balance reaches a specified minimum balance. Roll up your super today and save thousands. Thank you very much for listening to these tips. I hope they've been very helpful to you. If you'd like it done for you and would like a no obligation complimentary personal consultation, please contact myself. If you found these tips helpful, please like, comment and share to show your appreciation. For more investing insights, please visit my website at martydunlock.com.au.